Hi everyone, this is For the Love of Comics with the latest installment in our multi-episode bookshelf tours. This is a series of videos shelf by shelf in which we put on display our entire comic book graphic novels collection. All shelf videos recorded so far can be found in this handy dandy playlist linked above to which today we are adding our fifth shelf although it's the fourth in the way around the room. Apart from one last section of Marvel Comics elsewhere this is the last bastion of the big two DC and Marvel Comics and features first edition hardcovers, deluxe hardcovers as well as some Dark Horse library editions. So without further ado let's jump into shelf number four. Our top shelf starts off a little atypically, as most of these shelves seem to do. Instead of the regular hardcover superhero comics that this shelf mainly has, the first book on this shelf is this autographed trade paperback of Fanboy by Mark Evanier and Sergio Aragones. It seems like a fitting start to the shelf for me. Then we have something that really doesn't fit in with everything else is Drawn in Quarterly's 10 issues of Louis Reel by Chester Brown. This is a non-fiction series that I also have collected in a hardcover volume. We start the superheroics with this hardcover edition of Superman Kryptonite written by Darwin Cook with art by Tim Sale. These are the first four issues I think of Superman Confidential, a series I haven't read beyond this volume. This is DC Comics' edition of Will Eisner's The Spirit, A Celebration of 75 Years. I have an entire episode dedicated to this volume as part of our Will Eisner playlist, which you can find linked above. This is the original hardcover edition of Arkham Asylum, A Serious House on Serious Earth by Grant Morrison and Dave McKean. This early edition looks strikingly similar to the volumes of Sandman that Dave McKean also worked on. I talked a little bit about Steven Siegel and Terry Christensen when we were looking at uh, Genius on Shelf 3. It's a Bird is their collaboration on a DC comic and one of the most unique Superman stories that I've ever read. I love a lot of Christensen and Siegel's work and this is right up there. Then the hardcover of Superman American Alien by Max Landis, a collection of short stories featuring various artists. I enjoyed this. Some of the stories are really good, a couple of them I couldn't stand and most of the others fall in between. The Dark Knight Archives Volume 1 collects the earliest Batman stories written by Bob Kane. And it's good to have a reference, but I really don't enjoy these early stories that much. What I do enjoy is Catwoman When in Rome by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. This might be one of the earliest, if not the earliest, collaboration between Loeb and Sale that I read. I greatly enjoyed it and I love having this standalone slim volume. In the midst of all this DC, there's an IDW hardcover that slipped in, The Rocketeer, The Complete Adventures, collecting the original eight stories of The Rocketeer by Dave Stevens. I'm a big fan of this short-lived series. I know there have been a couple of revivals attempted as well, but the original stories are a lot of fun and it's great to have them all in this one volume. The only problem I have with it is the recoloring, which isn't the best. Challenges of the Unknown by Loeb and Sale might be their first official collaboration, but it's my most recent uh, acquisition in trying to catch up on what else they've done. Not as good as their later work, but still a fun read. Trade paperback of Superman for All Seasons by Loeb and Sale, one of my favorite Loeb and Sale collaborations, one of my favorite Superman stories. This is my original TPB from years ago. I also have the hardcover deluxe edition below. Another original hardcover collection, this time of Marvels by Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross. And here's an old trade paperback of mine, Superman the Man of Steel by John Byrne. This is a hardcover dust jacket edition of Dark Victory that I really love. I like Dark Victory, which is another Batman story by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, but I really love this edition. You could consider Dark Victory as part of a trilogy of uh, Batman books by Loeb and Sale, including The Long Halloween and Haunted Night, and I would love to have those two books in this format as well. Then we have some Justice Society of America hardcovers, The Next Age, Thy Kingdom Come, books one, and two, and Justice League of America Second Coming. This is a hardcover of Ego and Other Tales, a fantastic collection of Darwin Cook stories, which includes not just the title story Ego, but also the graphic novel Catwoman, Selena's Big Score, and stories from Batman Black and White and Solo. This is a terrific collection of Batman and Catwoman stories that I highly recommend to everyone. We shift to Vertigo with Pride of Baghdad. This is not the deluxe edition. This is the original first hardcover edition. Pride of Baghdad is one of my favorite comics of all time and featured in my top 10 gateway comics list, which you can find linked above. And then two books by Paul Pope, both science fiction, both hardcovers from Vertigo, Heavy Liquid and 100%. Both a lot of fun. 
with signature great art from Paul Pope. This last book is an unwrapped edition of Batman Hush. I bought this used online to check out what an unwrapped edition looked like. And it gives you the pencils, but the final uh, lettering, which didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I'm not sure I like the unwrapped editions. On the second shelf here, we have possibly my favorite superhero series of all time, Astro City by Kurt Busiek, Brent Anderson, and Alex Ross. I keep these early hardcover volumes wrapped in plastic because they're autographed first editions. So there's volume one, Life in the Big City, volume two, Confession, volume three, Family Album, volume four, Tarnished Angel, Local Heroes, and The Dark Ages, volumes one and two. After these Wildstorm volumes of Astro City, we come to the newer, slimmer Vertigo volumes. So I have Through Open Doors, Victory, Reflections, and Private Lives. There are a couple that I'm missing in between, as well as after this that I really need to get to fill in the collection. After the first hardcover editions of Astro City, we have the first hardcover editions of The Sandman by Neil Gaiman and various artists. For some reason, these are in reverse order. So here are the first editions of The Wake, the Kindly Ones, World's End, Fables and Reflections, Brief Lives, perhaps my personal favorite volume, A Game of You, Season of Mists, perhaps my second favorite volume, Dream Country, and A Doll's House. I'm missing the very first volume, Preludes and Nocturnes, in hardcover. Although in the case of volume one, the first edition was actually a paperback. Still, I'm going to get that volume one in there one day. This is a hardcover of the Dream Hunters, the Amano illustrated version. I have the P. Craig Russell comics version as well on a different shelf. And we finish this shelf off with a Superman hardcover, Escape from Bizarro World, my trade paperback of Batman Year One, which has its own playlist on this channel, and a trade paperback of The Best of the Spirit, which makes a couple of appearances in my Will Eisner playlist. The next shelf features some special editions, including deluxe editions from DC, which are slightly larger than the normal trade paperback sized collections that we've been seeing so far, even if they were in hardcover. Right over here is Mythology, a huge coffee table sized book, which is not going to fit into this frame. I haven't been sure whether I wanted this or not. I like the artwork of Alex Ross, but I'm not sure about buying art books. I like buying comics, but I'm not sure if I want to buy coffee table art books and it was an expensive buy but I, I found it for very cheap second hand it's, it's a bit of a rundown copy but that's fine by me the interior pages are in good shape and that was a good compromise this is a special edition of batman black and white the first volume of course at that time uh, it wasn't known that there would be more volumes collecting the original stories in the black and white series this is slightly oversized has a ribbon and a tip in art plate then the deluxe edition of Solo, Batman Noel by Lee Bermejo. Batman Noel is a special format, it seems, because it's the same size as the deluxe editions, even though it isn't labeled one. The deluxe edition of Multiversity, which I really wanted to enjoy but didn't. Superman Red Sun, which I love. And the deluxe edition of Superman for All Seasons, the trade paperback of which we saw on the shelf above. Superman, Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. This is part of the DC Stories of Alan Moore trade paperback that I had in my Oversights video, but I couldn't pass up a chance to own it in hardcover. This is the DC Universe by Neil Gaiman, which is interesting. It has a couple of decent stories, but it's nowhere near as good as the Alan Moore volume is. When looking at shelf one, I'd said that the trade paperback was the only way I owned Kingdom Come. That is not true. I actually do have the deluxe edition. I forgot that I bought and upgraded it. Batman Year 100 by Paul Pope. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a fan of Paul Pope. And this is a really good take on Batman. And then we have the upgrade sections, the deluxe hardcover edition of The Killing Joke. Whatever Happened to the Caped Crusader. Batman Year One, which regular viewers of this channel know is one of my favorites. And the one book on this shelf that I have not read, Batman Planetary. As, as, as I said, when we were looking at shelf four, I have not yet read Planetary, but just like that big fat omnibus, one day I will get to this. This might even be part of the omnibus, I'm not even sure. If you know, let me know in the comments below. Then we have a couple of noir editions, including the Batman Noir Eduardo Riso edition, the Killing Joke Noir edition, and of course the Watchmen Noir edition, which I've featured in its own video. And right outside the frame is the slip-cased four-volume hardcover edition of Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns.
I'm not as big a fan of The Dark Knight Returns as I am of Batman Year One and indeed many other Batman stories, but this is just my favorite edition of this book. And finally, the last shelf contains Dark Horse Library Editions, those for Hellboy and Buffy Season 8. I love these Hellboy Library Editions. They may be my favorite collected editions ever, more than Absolute Editions, more than Omnibuses, more than a lot of other forms. This style with this production quality and material is just superb, and Hellboy is a great, fantastic series that really deserves this kind of treatment, and I think anyone who enjoys Hellboy would love to own the series in this format. And it's the same with the Buffy Library editions. Oversized books, gorgeous production, wonderful all around. And that brings us to the end of this show. Are there any books or editions over here that you'd like a closer look at? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a like to let me know if you did, and I'll see you at the next shelf.